let the numbers do the talking. So tonight with us, we have uh, Mr. Lin Kei Xu and his lovely wife, Nyo Sui Lin. Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello, hi. Yes. Thanks for having us, Terry. Yeah. No, most welcome. Uh, so today, what we're going to talk about would be uh, non-political. It is really on the issue of where on uh, seeking a job employment in the art industry because mm -hmm. seeking uh, employment in the art industry is really probably the last thing uh, nowadays parents would advise their kids to have uh, they would say do, go be a lawyer a doctor uh, uh, even a politician but 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 being an actor actress might <laughs> might might not be the recommendation by the parents so uh, that's why we have um, both of them today with us to talk about their experience in this industry, the kind, the difficulties that they face, and of course the pleasure that they may have along the way, uh, and, and of course the ways of circumventing anything that might come along the way. Yes. So um, maybe um, Mr. Lim, maybe you would like to talk about like how you came about into this industry. Okay, it was quite an accident actually. Um, I didn't do very well at university because I, I discovered that the, I did biochemistry and genetics as a, a joint degree in Leeds University. But I, after the first term, I knew I didn't enjoy it, you know. But I really didn't have the courage to tell my father. My father had done so much research to say, why don't you do biochemistry together with genetics? You like genetics, right? And my father was a doctor, so he was very bent towards me doing the sciences, simply because I did quite well at school, at both the arts and the sciences. Uh. Whereas my brother Ketong hadn't done well, he failed all his science O-levels. So there was no choice, he couldn't become a doctor or a scientist or anything. So there was no pressure on him. My sister went and did medicine, because she did well. So that was, my family, was my, my father was driving me towards that. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do after the army, you know. I had a good time in the army. I uh, played rugby for the army in Singapore, so I had a good life, lah. Basically, we would, we were treated very well because uh, we represented the army in Singapore. So my father persuaded me, okay, these courses are for the future, and he was right. You know, biochemistry and genetics are really quite the future in 1975. You know, 1977. So I, I listened to him, but after the first term, I, I it wasn't for me. I, I really. Biochemistry is just straight learning of all these chemical pathways of life. And it was very boring for me. But I didn't have the guts to tell my father. So uh, it was very unfortunate. After my second year, I kind of flunked the major subject, biochemistry. I came back home and my father was very upset with me. He said, why do you tell us everything is okay and it's not? And I said, I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah, I didn't have the guts to tell you. And during that holiday, he, he died of a heart attack in front of me. So my mom came to my room and I had been drinking that night and, you know, drinking alcohol. And my mom said, Dad's having a heart attack. Go and be with him. I'm going to call the heart doctor. And he was struggling to breathe. When I got in the bedroom, I felt his hand getting colder. I started crying. And he suddenly just went still and looked at me and said, don't cry. Please don't cry. And he died. So I, I was really, really screwed up. You know, I kind of blamed myself for letting him down and also for not saving his life during that time. So... Um, I was a very heavy drinker at the time. I learned to drink a lot in England and in university in England. And I kind of punished myself drinking a lot. Lah. Until I discovered acting at 29, I tried a lot of things working in finance, in banking, in advertising. Nothing stuck. I found out uh, I didn't really like banking because they lent money to people who didn't need it. And they wouldn't lend money to people who had some really good ideas. You know, So I was very disillusioned with that. Advertising was very backstabbing and dog eat dog as far as I could see. So although he was quite creative, I enjoyed that part of it. I was a copywriter. I, uh, I, it wasn't for me also. Then I didn't know what to do with my life. And I had a girlfriend at that time who did educational TV. And she forced me like, oh, you speak good English. So uh, you present for me. Say, hi, kids. Today, we're going to talk about putting on a play, you know. And then we went to film Theatre Works having their first auditions. Theatre Works first production. It was a new a drama company. My brother was one of the early directors of the other works. So I went for the, uh, to film them holding auditions for their first play. And when I saw the, audition, the auditions, I thought, wow, this looks amazing, man. It's really fun. <laughs> I want to do this. Yeah, I want to try. <laughs> so after we pack up all the cameras filming the audition, I auditioned. 
And the director, the the art, the uh, the director then of theatre works was Lim Xiao Chong, and he auditioned me and he gave me a part. So my brother went to him and said, "Hey, come on, man! My brother has never acted before, and I don't want to be accused of nepotism. Please don't cast him." But Xiao Chong stood by me and he said, "No. After a three days audition, he's really, really by far the best choice we have for this part. He was a second-hand car salesman who, like, has an affair with his best friend's wife and all that in front of his friend even." So a bit of a bastard, you know. So I really enjoyed that process. I never intended to be an actor, but I really, I think, after my father dying in front of me and all that, I needed some catharsis in life. And you know, I I was spending a lot of time trying to find out what I wanted to do with my life to earn money, so I didn't have time to do that. So acting suddenly became like a real kind of like a surge, a therapy, and something that I really enjoyed doing. So after the first play. Lucky, I was a, a guy, so a lot of guys. There were very few guys who could afford the time to do acting. Even those who are really talented, they needed a full-time job in those days, you know. So we would rehearse from seven p.m. until like two a.m. in the morning, and very few people could commit to that kind of life, lah. Most people in those days had full-time jobs. I think theatre was still. It was be my sushi tonight for theatre works was the first first kind of semi-professional, but we were paid like two hundred dollars for like three and a half months' work. So it was hardly anything, lah. You know, you couldn't survive on it. So, but I really loved it. So I committed myself to it, and thank goodness I discovered radio voiceovers for commercials. That really saved my life financially, and I saved up a lot of money from being in the bank and advertising. I didn't spend much, you know. I just spent on drinking, but luckily I didn't. You know, it didn't break me, lah. I didn't break my bank. So acting was a surprise. Thing for me, but something that I grew to love doing because of the therapy side of it, and slowly, so I became a very instinctive actor, not so technically good like my brother or like Swilin is a brilliant uh, using her gut and technique. But I only had my gut. I only had life experience in my gut. Um, I slowly learned technique, and I survived by doing uh, radio commercials. Uh, that's how I got by for the first uh, four, five, six years. So he mentions uh, he mentioned Lim Xiao Chong who was the director yeah. uh, of Theatre Works. Um, so we we always call Xiao Chong our matchmaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's the question I would like to follow up with. How did you uh, two meet? <laughs> so so because for me, uh, unlike him, you know, I I mean I was acting since a very young child because I came from Katong Convent, um, and uh, Katong Convent, you know, our principal at the time, Mrs. Marie Bond, she was way ahead of her time. Uh, she uh, she really promoted the arts all the way. You know, she loved uh, poetry. She loved Shakespeare. Uh, she loved the act of performing, and she really promoted. Even though you know everybody at that, age, I remember in the seventies, right, it was all about the science schools. The science schools doing well. I mean, eventually, Katong Convent also went that way. And of course, they lost their the advantage which they had with the arts. You know, because they cannot really work, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I've been acting since very young, and I had um, nuns teaching me, uh, Sister Josephine and Sister Dolores. So from primary school, I was uh, doing uh, speech and drama. I mean, like you know, with the Trinity College coming, uh, examiners coming. You no, know, I still remember as a young girl, like you know, having to do like walking on the seashells, collecting seashells, that kind of thing. So we actually got certificates uh, for acting and speech and drama from primary school onwards. Yeah, um, but my first kind of professional uh, job was um, for a play called Dragon's Teeth Gate, uh, which uh, Stella Con uh, wrote. She was commissioned for the Singapore Arts Festival 1986. Yeah. Um, and there were open auditions and, and I got cast in a, in a role, uh, which was the, and, and this, is, this is what I think for me, uh, somehow I always, I got cast because I needed to fill a gap, you know, like they didn't have older act actors. So I was only 20, 21. 22, I think uh, I was third year law school mm. at the time, or second year second law year, school at the time. Year. Yeah. Um, and I got cast in the role of the mother. And they cast, uh, and uh, he cast another man uh, as my son, who was even older than KSU. <laughs> so uh, Tony, uh, after one week of rehearsal, said, Cannot, lah, cannot. She's so young. How can I look like her grandfather, not even her father? So he quit. And then Xiao Chong went to look for Case Yu and asked Case Yu to come and fill in for him. Yeah. And that's how we met. Yeah. I played his mother. I played my mother. And I'm, I was seven years older than her. At that age, it counts more, you know. I was, 
but it seems that you all two have always been like such roles. Uh, in the case of Bo Chu Kang, it's like uh, you, you're you're acting as Frankie Fu, then yeah, yeah. Uh, Sweetie is uh, as Ama. So right, it's, uh, right. Yeah, it's always like one gen. Uh, uh, Sweetie is acting one age gen generation above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got this amazing voice, lah. This this really amazing voice, is it? They used yeah. to say to me, for, like for the stage, is because my center of gravity is lower, so I'm more grounded. So I, you know, I feel like I have a lot of weight. So a lot of like an age uh, character that has age. But then for TV and film, I think it's the voice, lah. <laughs> Loud lungs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Old woman's voice. What yeah. can I say? <laughs> and and in case you sir, uh, case you you didn't study um uh, acting. You didn't do acting school. Whereas for Sweeney, you went to law school and subsequently went to music and. Uh, yes, I yes. did go to the Scottish Academy of Music and yes. Drama. Yes. Yeah, and in fact, I mean that was actually by accident also because I mean there was a scholarship in that year that I won the scholarship. It was a tobacco scholarship because uh, in 1990 they they banned uh, advertising for tobacco companies. Yes. So the tobacco companies have so much money to spend, it's and uh, budget, yeah. they saw budget. They right? save on advertising, and then so they could not advertise. You see, yes. so they had all this budget. That year, the the managing director of the British American Tobacco Company happened to like drama. Okay. Right. So the, for the next four years, he was the the the, the director. The patron. <laughs> yeah, and he was good friends with the British Council director, who was a Glaswegian. Yeah. So that's how we ended up going. I ended up going to Glasgow. There were four scholars, including Josephine Peter, uh, Josephine Ro now Dr. Joe Ronan. That uh, th Terry, thank you. The online citizen helped us when we were raising funds for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I won that scholarship uh, in 1991. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that? Of course, you know the, the the same company, right? Four years later, they changed managing director, right? And the new managing director liked cricket. So after that, all the money went to cricket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the way it works. That's the way it works. <laughs> so it's just lucky, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in terms of acting, that's how we met. We met on stage, right? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I saw yeah. him yeah. already. I had already seen him on stage in that play that he talked about, Goose Pimples, and quite a few plays. So yeah. I've already seen him. I already watched him, and then I met him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he always says that. Um, he immediately liked me. But I, I fell for like, her, but I'm not her type, <laughs> la, so I had to take her for seven years. You know? Seven years? Yeah. So, so, ah, you courted her for seven years? We Chase, were I friends. Yeah, we I were friends. We became friends first because she's not interested. It was very clear. She we was were friends. friends. Uh, we were good friends. Seven years Seven years later. Yeah. <laughs> seven years later, we were in a play where we played husband and wife. So then, so was yeah. that was that a start? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. That, that day we were workshopping how this couple started to love each other, yeah. fell in love, and uh, I had always liked her anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you put your your real feelings into the the act. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and I suppose really felt that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I partly think... music saved my life also because I used to write a lot of songs for therapy also. Yes. And she liked the songs that I wrote. So That's I, true. So it was part of that what made her go like, oh, not so bad after all. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> my help, my help. <laughs> uh, if I may follow up on Terry's uh, earlier question when he started hmm. yeah, yeah. About, about how parents feel about the children going to the arts. Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see, I analyzed the starting salaries of the graduates every year and hmm. almost invariably every year, the lower starting salaries uh, there's always those from the arts or the music faculties you know so do you have any advice for well uh, you know people who want to you know get into the arts community i think if you're really committed to it and you know this is what you want to do you will find a way there that like, i found different avenues that were like radio voiceovers and slightly connected but not totally connected I think times are better now than they were when we started because the industry, the theatre industry anyway, was very semi-professional when we started and salaries were much lower. Although they're not very high now, I think there is some funding, you know, partly the NAC and partly private companies too. And so theatre companies can survive, you know, they have to work really hard and it's, it's still an issue as to whether they can. They have to plan very well and keep their fingers crossed and do a lot of fundraising on the side also. Um, 
the actors now, you know, there's there's La Salle. There was La Salle when when Suilin was around also when I started, but that wasn't the same. Thing. It wasn't the same. Yeah. You know, there wasn't so much of an industry then. So it is still tough, but I think if you are really, for me, I also felt you know this is what I want to do personally. But I also started learning that we were making commentaries on our own society, our own people, and that was very valuable. You know, we were making connections that way with our audience to say, I think Singapore is a bit like this, don't you? And that was quite magical to have an audience. When an audience recognizes what you're playing and what you're talking about, that recognition is, can be quite magic. You know, you can feel it in the house, especially in live theatre. I have to say, the two yeah. of us were involved. Yeah. Uh, we were lucky to be involved in like uh, Army Days, the first Army Days on stage. Yeah. I I tell you the feeling in the in the house, right, on the night that we opened. Mm. So before we started, we were all a bit like, is this funny or not? You know, I played mm. Ahui, right? The uh, Ahui or Aliana. Yeah. Uh, mm. the, the, you know, the my, my father, mother sell fish ball noodles, that mm. kind of. Uh, and um, we were like, is it really funny? But my goodness, the feeling in the theatre, the first time they heard their own, um, you know, our own vernacular, not everybody just talking really well, you know, like I, the way I grew up, I watched the stage club all the time, you know, and I loved it. I lapped it all up. Yeah. But suddenly you see, wow. They talk like that on TV, on, it's on our stage. It's own people, yeah. Huh? They got la la, got one la, only why would they go crazy? Like? Yeah. And we had to be careful because there was a certain kind of ban on, on, on Singlish even, you know, in the early days. So we had to be careful, not too many la's and laws and all that kind of thing. In case that everybody thinks that Singaporeans can't speak English, you know, I think that's a load of rubbish. But now, now they're much freer because they realise, you know, yeah, and you know, sing theater was always uh, an ang more thing before, stage club and all that. You know, even when my brother started, he could only play minor parts like butler for the stage club, until they set up theater works. And that year, 1985, Act Three, Necessary Stage, and theater works started up. So suddenly there was this buzz in Singapore, and that was the beginning of like professional local theater. Professional is one very important thing. Trying to be professional and making sure that actors get paid. Backstage people get paid and all that crew get paid, huh? And but also the material they, they were get, trying to get writing that was like home based, huh? and all our characters being home based. So suddenly there's this like I said, lah, we we're talking about our own people and our own society, and trying to put up a mirror to our own society, lah. It was really exciting in those days. Yeah. So uh, well, I you know I also wanted to say something about what what Zahir was asking about because yeah. uh, so we we have a, a niece, uh, my cousin's daughter, who's just jo who's joined the industry. Mm. When she wanted to go to La Salle, her parents asked us to talk to her, and uh, that's when I discovered actually what my attitude is to this. You know, um, I thought that I would be the one to tell her like, oh yeah, you must follow your dream, but no, I was the one who said. Why you want to do this? You study so well. Why don't you go and study go university first? And then if you still feel like you want the acting, but then you can go. And then, you know, one of the last things that she said to me was, uh, but then you also got no degree, but you never use one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so what's, what's the response? So, you know, I realized that yeah. the reason why I shared with her that is because, um, you know, as you say, as you said, Terry, I start, you know, I now like always lao lang, right? I always get class as an older person. Yes. Uh, and then when there are fewer and fewer parts for older people, we get less and less cast, you mm. know? Mm. So often now we, we, we don't get as much work as we wish we could, yeah. right? And I think uh, I wanted to prepare her and I want people who really want to go into acting to realize that it is not a, I mean, yes, it's fun, but it's not always going to be fun. And you must be prepared. You must be so sure of yourself. You must be so true to what you believe in. You know, you must follow your dream. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. And there are going to be days where it's really horrible. Mm. <laughs> you know, you will be at the mercy of people who want to cast you or not, right? Yeah. So um, I just, I think, yeah, you, I think you have to be really, 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 really prepared um, to, to not think that it's going to be a really like smooth ride. Right. Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, exactly. Even though you might be connected, even though you might be well off, that doesn't mean that you would have a smooth journey in this career. Yes, yes. Well said, yeah. Yes. Exactly what I was. <laughs> yeah. I was also lucky because I had worked before, you know, in yeah. finance and banking and advertising and saved up a lot of money. Because uh, although my parents were well off and could send me for education, what they told me was that this is it. 
your whole inheritance is your education after that is up to you oh. you know it's only recently that because uh, we're selling the family house and all that there's some money but in those days my money was what i earned and that was all i had you know my mother was in no my father died early my mother had no means of supporting me in that way so i had to make my own decisions lah. You know, there was no cushion actually, and Singapore is quite became a more and more expensive place to live. But would so, you, but would you say that being put in such a position, compelled you to really think hard on your decisions, to 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 really think of like what's my next step? Because let's say if you are like, really well to do, you don't have to think about like when's your next meal ticket. You would like just cruise through. If there's opportunity so, come, yeah, yeah. Mummy and daddy are just saying, don't worry, give you the cushion, then you don't have to think. But that's why, like, I would call the production houses that did voiceovers because it wasn't a given. I would call them every day, you know. Hi, I'm Casey. I can do Armor accent. I can do local. Those days, local was just starting on radio commercials also. So that was an advantage. That's how I got cast for those voiceovers because all the voiceover artists were Armor. So the Armors couldn't do a local accent. They're like, hey, I don't want law. They can't do. So suddenly, there was something, there was an avenue for me and I was very aggressive. I call it every day, yeah. and if I could get three voiceovers a week, I was making a lot of money. So you know? at that time, there was a vacuum. There's a vacuum yeah. that you can feel. Of Singaporeans, yeah, no Singaporeans doing. Yes, you're right. And, you're and right. you could cover both sides, isn't it? The Amor yes. accent and. I already did it in England, then I did NS, right? So NS brought me back to Singapore and grounded me in Singapore also. So uh, I was grateful for NS in that way, lah. You know, also, yeah, yes. Mm. <laughs> On um, um. What, in your view, are perhaps some of the issues or problems in the arts community or industry today? Uh, uh, okay, okay, maybe, maybe let's let's make it not so political. Uh, uh, what what kind of difficulties would you say uh, would be artists or art uh, artists face in going to this industry? Putting aside money aside, putting money aside, what mm. kind of difficulties would is it the so called the exposure, it, is it the opportunities uh, given that uh, despite it being a better environment, you still have limited uh, uh, so called production house that are, that are coming out with uh, events? Particularly in light of this pandemic, there's a lot of yeah, production of that, that has, uh, uh, has either closed or postponed their, uh, their works. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this pandemic is really something that has, is, a, is a changer. Huh? I mean, you know, the two of us have started streaming uh, live every day. We do that twice a day, in fact, uh, and we sing songs. Uh, that's a new thing that we've discovered, yeah. uh, singing songs together. Uh, you know, and in this day and age, which we didn't have in those days, you've got the internet. So, uh, like, for instance, I just joined a casting call group on Facebook uh, where I went, oh, in the, if only we had all this in those days. Uh, mm. Now, you know, I mean, the, you, you can actually send it. Very quickly, you can make a, a, a tape of yourself, yes. a video of yourself, you can send it along, you know. Mm. I think that, that is an advantage, in fact, that what, what, what we have now in yeah. this day and age. But then, of course, now, I mean, everything is put on hold. Live theatre is put on hold. Uh, mm. we, have to be, we have to be creative. Um, and that, that's what we've done to fill our time. Partly for us is to fill our time. Yes. Yes. So the other thing I would say also is that um, to have other skills uh, is, is good, you know, you, 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 if you are an actor that can also do a bit of production work, you know, can mm -hmm. learn to do a little bit of other stuff at all, I think uh, that, that, that makes you more useful, yeah. it makes you more uh, uh, versatile. Yeah. A lot of young actors are starting to write and create their own pieces these days because sometimes the work is not coming their way and they just have to, you know, and those who say, oh, I can't write, or it's a very lonely process, if they don't get down to it, they may have no jobs for some time. So I really, really appreciate those young actors who have just gone and done it for themselves. You know Started their own YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube some channel. Of them we've seen. Actually, yeah. that's the question I would like to uh, follow up with. It's like, in, in the past, you have to rely on like real life uh, theater work for, yes. for, for the work. But nowadays, frankly, you, you could probably start up a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, and you can produce yourself. So you could you produce, you can write a script, you could do a show. Uh, uh, for example, those uh, like Wang Hong in China, they, they are basically doing their own theatre work and through their their old streaming devices and having a lots of fans and their oh, income is coming from there. 
So yeah, they, they, they can monetize that way also, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So nowadays it's not so limited to the conventional theater, but but correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, the site that we stream on every day is called Sessions Live. Actually, there's quite a few Singaporeans that we've met uh, that are there as well. And uh, we, we, cause we auditioned by sending in a tape. And they said, no, they were actually scouted from their Instagram. <laughs> Sessions wrote to them and asked them to come and join and start streaming there. Yeah. Uh, and through streaming now, I've learned how to use OBS, uh, Terry. Yes. Uh, we borrowed his microphone from you before. You know, all those little things that you learn to improve yourself, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Make yourself more relevant in this day and age. Uh. Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. And then during this pandemic, there's, there's hardly any live theatre that's been allowed. So the, the theatre companies have had to adapt, right? Mm. They have to. They have to go digital and learn what this dig digital me medium means. And at the, at the start, they won't be so good at it, lah, you know, because they're not so good at filming, you know, they're not so good at this process, camera work, it planning camera shots, time, and man. how to tell the story that way. Sure. We're used to live theatre where we tell it in a certain way, you know. So everybody has had to adapt. Lah. And I guess the young, the young people, they have an advantage in that they grew up with this technology. Lah. Mm. So they seem to know it, you know, those, those who are smart seem to know it very well. And those who are creative will thrive, definitely, you know. And I'm so proud of them because they have sought these avenues, you know, they know how to use live streaming, which is like the modern equivalent of live theatre, you know, there's still a live element to it. Yeah. But, but just whether or not the audience can interact, that's another thing. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You have to see how like, whether the audience likes it. You know? yes, yes, yes. Also interact like you're right. How like if you're in the theater, you can you know you want to tell them to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if they want to talk, they will still talk. So you can mute them if you want. Yeah, you can mute them. yeah. They have a discussion room, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so make comments as they watch. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of our usual uh, regulars, uh, Bart Badria, who's on uh, your your channel, uh, is reminding us that uh, I did a, a play called Waiting for the Host. Mm. Yeah, it was an online theatre production yeah. uh, and that was really pandemonium being very creative, uh, yeah. finding a play that was written for Zoom, yeah. written during this pandemic, uh, is a Zoom play, it was a Zoom play and it really went down choice. very well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think audiences are ready for such a transition. The only question is how do theatre theatres get the audience to pay for it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's... In the past, theatres are, lim are, are being confined to audience seats. That means how much this theatre can hold, 500, 600. But yeah. now with this uh, online thing, if the, if I think it, it opens up a new venue, revenue. Yes, yes, and online is a great equaliser at the moment because yes. you, you don't have to pay so much. If theatre yes. is... For the rental... I started all uh, rich people watching only, you know, so yes. it's not so good, you know? Yes. Yeah. If yeah, it's a very atas kind of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there is, um, you know, it, there is, there, there will, and there is, and there is beginning to, and I think he's still continuing this, what they call uh, online fatigue, you know, you, you get, you, you, there's nothing that can replace the feeling of being in a space, in a theatre, you know, with 100 or 20, uh, 200 other people watching something live uh, being performed to you. It's, there's nothing that can replace If, if I be a visionary, I would say, Maybe one day we'll be watching the theater through VR glasses. Then that will probably <laughs> replace that, that experience. Yeah, because, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Because, because currently, what we uh, it's very hard to find uh, like uh, parity with the live and the virtual because you're looking through a screen and that, that, uh, and you can't see the other participants. So no. let's say in the future VR, you can see who is sitting by your side, so called sitting by your side. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, they react. Yes. 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 And I, I think probably another thing will be. Uh, people don't have the uh, like posh events to wear their gowns anymore. Ah uh, yeah. <laughs> right. yes. yeah. Take the red, red carpet. Uh, go correct, red carpet correct. treatment. Take all this champagne. Uh, yeah. Stuff. yeah. It doesn't have to be that high flying social event at yes, all. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, since we're here, uh, uh, on on this topic of interaction, there's still uh, there's someone asking. Uh, what, uh, I think it would be directed to like both of you by playing different roles, right? How does it affect you psychologically? Is it, ah, uh, that's uh, a good question. Would, uh, uh, yeah. Would, would, would you, would, would playing a particular role affect you like in person or would, can you like divide this person, this character persona, persona from yourself? 
Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a very good question because mm. uh, uh, as, you, as, you get, um, as you get more go uh, kind of good at what you do, I think you are able to separate, um, you know. You learn how to. Yeah, you learn yeah. how to. Uh, because I, I, do, I do remember there were times where I played um, certain characters where it really absorbed absorbed me to the point where um, you, you remember in London when I played the Japanese... Uh, Three Japanese women, yeah. yeah Japanese, mm. uh, uh, one of the Japanese one, uh, women in a whole house who mm. was, uh, you know, scarred by the nuclear um, uh, explosion um, and how other... It's a very good play um, about yeah. how uh, some of the, the men that have visited the brothel uh, because of guilt, because they were not there and they want to have the experience, you know. And I did a lot of research into what it would be like, what it felt like, what what went through. Um, and he 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 told me, otherwise I wouldn't have realized because he 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 suddenly realized that you know how come you're so. I was very emotional, um, and mm -hmm. I would be like you know, uh, yeah. Oh, I I thought I thought I got caught up too much into the the emotion of the character. Yeah, and it was hard to detach myself from it. Yeah, it was about a widow's club where the American GIs would go to this brothel and. What the, the 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 prostitutes who they call burnt meat for guilt association they want to have sex with the burnt meat so it's, it's quite twisted you know yes. and so she was reading about the real widows club that this play was based on she became so affected by it yeah. she, that she was becoming so introvert and disappearing into herself which is not like her and her eyes darting around looking very upset all the time you know <laughs> so I was of course worried but you know there was not much I could do besides say are you okay? Are you yeah. okay? You know, but she 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 woke herself up. Thank goodness, you know. Yeah, yeah. These things can affect you. Probably it can it affect you. Probably and you held the character within you to finish the work. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yes. I think that's what it what what it was. Yeah, it, it took some time and 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 uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's also because it was a very well written role. You know, so in mm. the end, I mean, it was in 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 London, and I actually got a lot of acclaim for that role. Yeah. Uh, so, me, me, I think. I think maybe I got the, you know I got the recognition and the claim partly because I was so invested in the role, yeah yeah yeah, but um, yeah I think uh, I I always remember um, some of the things that Ko Pao Kun Ko Pao Kun uh, who I learned a, a lot from because uh, I did quite a lot of work with him mm -hmm. uh, Ko Pao Kun said um, there's such a thing called acting you know <laughs> and then you go like. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> because when we were starting to act like yes. the thing called method acting was very popular. So it's like you disappear in the role, you make yourself that role and you know Immerse it's, it's so the, yeah. there's only one that's one way of doing it. There's so many ways, or you can use a combination of ways. But for pers us personally, I think we found as actors who've been acting for so long, you have to learn how to let go of that role. You know, and even compartmentalize as you're doing it. So there's a reality to it that you can find when you're doing the work, but somehow you have to be able to let it go on a daily basis and on a long-term basis. Could, could you yeah. like, uh, uh, as an actor, could you like really, at, at, at most, a snap notice, take a persona out and then put put it on like like a suit? Or do you have need time to get, in, get, get back to the mood of this person? You know, I think that question, it would depend on how close the character is to you. I see. So in, in a lot of cases, the reason why you get so involved, right, is because what you do is you don't become that person. You make that person you, you see. So, you know, there's a, there becomes this melding of what that character is and what part of you fits that character, right? Yeah. So, the, the, so I think that's when the most successful kind of a creation of a character is when the two meet very well mm. and very kind of like almost like, eh? Is it she's like that? Eh? You know, is yeah. it she's acting or is it? Uh, yeah. As actors, we talk a lot about outside in and uh, inside yeah. out. Huh? Uh, so yeah. outside in, I think you know there are some really, really talented mimics. For instance, they're really talented and they can mimic anybody, and you can recognize that person straight away. And they yeah. do it so well. But not every, not all actors are talented mimics, lah. And so the other way, inside out, is to find the part of you that really connects with that person. And I call it an act of compassion in a way, but you really got to connect. Find that part of you. Even you're playing like a serial killer or something like that, you know. Yeah. But where does that come from? You, you, you probably need to find something of yourself that can imagine yourself doing something like that. That's you know? where empathy comes in. You need to, yes. you need to understand this person. 
Yes. Why this person takes certain yeah. actions? Yeah. Yeah, and I guess the most successful actors are those who can combine both techniques, lah, outside in and inside out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Since it's, you it's, mentioned the uh, Ko Pao Kun, do you ah, think yeah. you do you think you will miss the substation? Ah yeah. Ah yeah. Ah, yeah. Very much, of course. It was a beautiful <sighs> space. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad. It's sad. You know that the it became so cast aside like that when it was such an important space. You know, it's been happening over a period of years that uh, the substation itself and the value of the place for artists to work, you know, then was diminishing slowly, and the the the, the commercial music side of the, the the attachment to that space was taking over. From from the art that was actually happening within the space, so it mm. was happening. It's no surprise, uh, but arts bodies they they also have their own agenda as to what they want to do and what they want this whole thing to be about. Not necessarily the same meeting point with artists, lah. So, it's a pity, um, yeah, but um, it's done, lah. Right, so yeah, but yeah, yeah. Wait and see. You know, we still value what the substation was all about. Appreciate everything that Pakun did to set up that space and all those people who ran it and. And participated in it. It was amazing. So many people were influenced by it in its heyday. Yeah. So, so would you say it was crucial in in the development of Singapore's art in the art space? Oh yes, definitely. I mean, like, uh, how many people remember? You know, the, the 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 things that you went to in the substation. What what space is there that is like what the substation was? Yeah. You know that whole sense of that little black box where so yeah. much important work. You know, theater, yeah. music, um, that gallery. You know, there was so that so there was so much history in that building. Yeah, and yeah. it wasn't commercial, so you could go and try out things. You try to make people aware of certain things, all sorts of agendas like that, right? Mm. To expose, to, to to see, show what you're interested in, and you don't have to succeed necessarily financially or invest so much money or try and seek so much investment also. And and that's it's art. very important for artists. Yeah, and that's art. <laughs> Yeah, that's art. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah, correct. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Hey, so far the discussion very serious, like Maybe uh, it's time for you guys to okay. sing oh, yeah. a song for no, us. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Before you sing song, right? Uh, let, let, uh, we have to go back to the theme of this, this, <laughs> this, uh, this, to the this topic. Today, yeah. So, um, I'm okay. I'm cutting into this. Uh. I think Sweeting, you'll be able to see this uh, in a while through the live stream. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah. so the, we we have to stay tuned to this uh, uh this uh, <laughs> session's um theme, which is uh, let the numbers do the talking. So in this case, we we, we are referring to a report that was done by Sunday Times. Sorry, uh, yeah, it's Sunday Times, right? By by Straits Times. So they they had this uh write up and said and listed artists as the um top top of the top five non-essential jobs in Singapore. So uh, what, what, what's your take on this, really? Uh, and in case you, yes. <laughs> okay, I was, I mean, obviously, because, you know, we are artists also, we were quite affronted by that um, article. And we, I, it made me wonder, first thing I wonder is, how, was the, how were the questions posed? Like? You know, because it's always a bias in the way you can always influence your pollsters, you know, your, your people who are answering your poll how to answer just by the way you phrase the question. So that was very interesting for me. Uh, I was initially like emotionally quite a, a affronted by that. You know? <laughs> yeah, come on, man. This is a, you know, I, mean, I was thinking this like this is a propaganda rag, so I'm not going to take it seriously. Anyway, and I've been feeling that way more and more over the years about the Straits Times and we see it's no longer relevant, is it? <laughs> you know? Their own figures show us they're not relevant anymore. <laughs> You know, partly because of the internet, but partly because also they, they are propagandists, you know. Yeah, so um, I think, you know, I was okay about it eventually when I thought about it to go, oh, yeah, they, they don't matter so much anymore anyway, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah no, we, we woke mm. up that day and then we, we know, we because we, we don't buy the Straits Times, I, I mean, I don't know who does, but uh, we, we, <laughs> we... People saw... who have pets, yeah, people who have pets. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of glass to clean. Yeah, a lot of glass to clean. But um, we saw it all over <laughs> Facebook, of course. And you know, of course, all our all our actor friends, our artist uh, friends, artist friends yeah. were all like, like, what? They really, really affronted, really, really upset. You know, as, uh, I mean, 
uh, I think uh, you you shared with us uh, one of our friends, uh, Rishi Rishi Budrani, who who you know he said uh, he he made a whole list of things. Okay, if if this is non-essential, the first thing I want you all to do now is when you all go home, cancel your Netflix, cancel your Spotify. You know, I mean, because these are all artists that are providing you with these things that you do every single day, it, it, every day. They give meaning to life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And in the pandemic time, in hindsight, it's a really stupid thing to talk about because it is what keep, we're keeping people sane. sane. Yeah. So they really backfired on them totally, you know. Yeah. I think so. In I way. was expecting politician to be the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, when I saw that, the first thought that came to my mind is uh, perhaps some people uh, may need to watch the Dead Poets Society, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. A beautiful movie. Yeah, well yeah. said. Then, yes. Captain, my captain. Yeah. Captain, my captain. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing that keeps us, you know, on topic. It keeps us uh, thinking what is relevant, what isn't. Art, art can do that with us, you know. It can affect your soul. So there's some spiritual kind of enlightenment to it, you know. But there's so many aspects to art that to simplify it down to a kind of... Uh, Monetary. Whole like that is very superficial anyway, lah, you know. Yes. It really doesn't matter. Well, it got people. Mm. It got people talking. So that in That's a way, good. it was yeah. good. I mean, yeah. Uh, mm. uh, we uh, we were doing our stream, mm. and that day, I just told him, I ah, yeah, forget it, like, Just have a good laugh anyway. You know, mm. it's the Straits Times after all. And then uh, what we did was the two of us did our stream that day. We went. I went to look for Barry <laughs> because, of course, according to them, uh, all artists wear Barry. <laughs> <laughs> we have a French moustache. You know, that's how superficial they were about depicting an artist in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stereotyping artists in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many times has the Straits Times interviewed you guys? Uh, you know, over the years, uh, you know, over the years, right? Like he won the first ever uh, live theatre award for best actor. Yeah, I mean, and the last, so the first <laughs> and the last. <laughs> why, why, why was it the last? I mean, no, yeah, other, I mean, no other Singaporeans it, no They scrapped it. They scrapped yeah. it. The editors no didn't want it, so the last reporter who reported it. She 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 begged. She to wanted to continue. Have it she was for the last good. year. Yeah. 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 Maybe they did because it was not essential or relevant. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, from their point of view, but they, that year also they fired a lot of journalists, huh, who were given no warning, and suddenly they lost their jobs with no warning. It was very severe, and from what I hear from the sack journalists, very cruel. You know, we've very, not, this, we've not mindful at all about these people's careers and their jobs and. I got. I got to tell you the la the mm. one that we're talking about the 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 the, the life theater award that he won, right? Mm. I still remember my dad was alive at the time, and uh, mm. he went to do the photo shoot, uh, and he regretted also doing the photo shoot because suddenly he was in the middle front page of the paper, like carrying the world on his. Well, I don't know how uh, they yeah, went and yeah, did the, the photo picture. shoot. I don't know what they asked me to do, <laughs> I just. Do and that. then uh, luckily the yeah. reporter sent me the picture. The first thing I looked was, ah, yeah, his belly button can see. Can you please choose a better picture? <laughs> and then she you know adjusted it. But my father had the best way of putting it. My father asked him, he said, Oh, you win best actor. Uh, got prize? Don't have. Got trophy? Don't have. Got money? Don't have. Got dinner? dinner? Don't, don't have. have. <laughs> then for what? <laughs> you made news for them, right? But you know, over the years also about talking about newspapers and us, uh, I mean, we used to like, I mean, to some extent, we rely on reviews, good reviews, and things like that. But I think we had started to learn how to be like less dependent on, you know, the, the, the state media reviews because there's only one point of view and the editors will influence the, the journalists in many ways too. So we were already gearing up to be less dependent on them and our word of mouth was getting bigger because our audiences were growing anyway. And, and people could follow you directly. Yes. Now they can, right? Yes, yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 So it's been a whole path of learning and also the changes in life and the changes of the nature of, of what media was uh, was became very interesting for us also, uh, you know, and the relationship changed because we didn't need them so much. And then they knew it earlier than us, but we also started to know it, you know. So it didn't really matter how this one opinion of the, the propagandist right would, would say, uh, you know. It's okay. I, yeah. I would like to ask uh, for Keishu, right? how, how can you talk about experience getting hooked up with um, all, the, all those Hollywood movies? Like example, the one that they had Jordan Fart uh, co uh, co starring with uh, Jordan Fart. Oh, yeah. And us, because it's like, I, I don't see any, not much local actors having such opportunities. Like, 
to to you is like was it dropping it in front of you like from the sky or is it did you have to do something? Very lucky lah. La. We, we I think when you get cast out of the in in the Western kind of uh, Hollywood medium, it's luck. You know, there's a, they, they, to us they, they view us as being partly the same. Anyway, us Asian East Asian actors, you know, one is pretty much like the other to them. So it just depends what the director is looking for. We didn't know that at the time, you know. We were like, oh, they cast us because we're good actors, and you know, we we might we might you know get deluded into thinking that way, or there may be an element of truth to it, but it's not the only story about it, you know. So I think we were lucky. We went for cattle call, which means everybody is asked to go. Then we got singled out for second callback, which is a lot of luck, whether they notice your face or not. Or whether you're too nervous and you screw it up, or whatever, you know, there's so many things that can happen. So we were both very lucky. Uh, you know, we'd been working in England before we came back, and then working in a bigger industry. I feel that we had learned a lot, and we had learned how to audition and how to look confident, even if you're not feeling it, and how to give eye contact to the people that you you are you are hoping to work with and work for. You know, so to be human about it and not just be nervous and oh, I hope I get it, I hope I do well. You know, to learn certain techniques, lah. To have you know, the so air, I suppose. They teach us a lot of these things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when we came back to Singapore, like Anne and the King, we had already done a few like movies and got cast. You know, and so what we were doing seemed to work. So we were lucky, also. I think that they noticed us, lah. Amongst all these East Asian actors that they were looking at, you know, like to them, no difference. We all look alike. You know, so. It's a lot of luck, a but, lot of luck. Yeah, and how well you do in it is also matters. You know how well you take the direction, how well the cameraman catches you. If the cameraman don't like you, also he won't, he won't be a good shot of you. So it's very funny, you know. So yeah. many factors. So many factors. Yeah. 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 So we learn a lot, lah. That's one thing I can say. We learn a lot how Hollywood operates, how the big scale production works. You know how much hierarchy there is in it. You know, the amount of times filming in Malaysia, these American guys go, "Hey, do you speak English?" And you feel like going, "I speak better English than you. What are you talking about?" You know, <laughs> but you just be polite, lah. You say, "Yeah, I do." You know, and yeah, uh, you just you just take it, lah. You know, because you keep working, that kind of stuff. You know, that is we learn a lot about how the how the industry works, how you can be up one moment and down the next. You know, yeah. but you know, we wanted to test ourselves to see whether we could do it. But our bread and butter, luckily, was theatre and. The theatre companies were using us quite a lot in Singapore when we came back from UK. So we were lucky, lah. At that time, also uh, theatre was opening up, getting more sponsorship. I have to say that although NAC does a lot of control and censorship, which we don't like, they also funded the arts a lot, and has made a lot of difference. When we look at our cousins in KL, they don't have that kind of state funding, and they are having problems, like you know, surviving the whole thing, you know, whether in whatever language the theatre is in, you know. So Singapore is quite lucky that we have this, although we have to deal with that sometimes unreasonable control, unmindful control, you know. But uh, some of the theatre leaders are very good at it. They know how to scale down and put it in somewhere anyway, yeah. you know. They know how to make the theme more about the individual than the soapboxing, you know. Because yeah. after all, we're trying to tell human stories anyway. So we learn uh, not to soapbox so much, but we still have a theme <coughs> inside, you know. We also have to grow. And become smarter, I think. You know, yeah. And uh, here's a uh, let the numbers do the talking question for you. <laughs> mm. How much support are you and the uh, arts uh, industry getting under the COVID nineteen support scheme for your industry? We don't know, lah. So yeah. We don't know, ah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we are just actors. We are just actors. Okay. No, no. Okay. Okay. Let, 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 let's rephrase that question. Uh, mm. As actor actresses, do you see any kind of support? Uh, have you gotten any support? We we just we don't talk about the industry as a whole. Mm. We just say, do you receive? Because uh, your livelihood has been heavily affected, mm. impacted. So, uh, just from the recipient point of view, have you received any support? I I I can't say that one hundred percent no because. Mm. You know, for instance, um, uh, there, there there have been a project or two where we did digital stuff where they would have gotten some kind of grant. Grant. Without that grant, I guess they wouldn't they have. They would have carried out the show. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Covid based grant. You yeah. know? So from the work yeah. we got, yes. So maybe, indirectly. Yeah. <laughs> indirect. Yeah. Indirect. Indirect. Yes. Yeah. 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 But for Not us directly. personally, no. I mean, yeah. yeah. Because because we, we want to compare. Uh, if you want me to compare like other industries, they are unemployed. Unemployed, they will get some relief grant. Uh, say the 
yeah. the private hires they will have some relief uh, yeah. but, but the actors because you don't have a uh, fixed income to gauge on in the first place so freelancers. Yeah, yeah so freelancers gig industry oh, so yeah. so they will say oh nothing to rely on to give you a um to give you any kind of reinvestment in a sense yeah, yes uh, uh, actually yeah. i can give you some of the numbers uh <laughs> If you can show that your income for the last uh, year, uh, compared to say uh, this year when you are applying uh, a COVID <laughs> recovery grant, if you can show that your income has been cut by at least fifty percent for at least three consecutive months, uh, you you may get uh, five hundred dollars for at least uh, three months, and uh, the ten percent uh, wage support for the arts community industry has been raised to 30% now during the circuit breaker. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you, but I think, uh, you know, uh, being uh, freelance, you, you, you may not yes. see this directly coming to you. We might not meet the criteria because yeah. one year is bad, one year is good, yes. one year is bad, one year is good. So a lot of artists don't meet the criteria at all, you know, because it's based on this regular income and then the difference in, during COVID times. Correct. You know, so it's, it's difficult. Lah. It's very difficult for freelance uh, artists we I have think, uh, yeah. we have quite a few of uh, actor friends you know like um, mm. making chili <laughs> baking cookies yes we've had to turn to also turn we to do streaming ways. we get a little bit of money for our streaming you know uh, which, which really helps it really helps you know and yeah. the two of us have always like we live simply um and uh, we're not, so we are not in need so you yeah know, there's no there's no need for us to uh, apply for any of those grants like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but yeah. we really like you know we really, our hearts go out to all our other um, non-essential friends. <laughs> non the young, the artists. young artists, the young artists, I, the I young feel ones. for them. Yeah. Yeah. They've had no time to, to garner any savings yet, yeah. so they're still living very hand to mouth. It's really tough for them. You know? yeah. So I wish that the authorities would think of that, the younger artists to help them out without so much uh, unmanageable criteria, like, you know, that, that is, uh, doesn't take into account what their life is really about. You know? So yeah. on this point, what kind of advice would you give to aspiring artists mm. on pursuing this line, especially in Singapore, uh, when the cost of living is so high? Mm. Like, be, be, what, be frugal, save, or uh, take this as a part-time thing before part-time venture, before you go into full-time, or... Yeah, it's hard. Huh? Yeah, it's very hard. I think be as flexible as possible within the art itself, be as flexible as possible. Always, yeah, be frugal because it's not what our life is about. Our life is not about being famous and spending a lot and getting rich. It's about the art itself. It's about the communion with others, trying to get this art done, you know, and being faithful to, to that. that. That's the main thing, you know. The rest, the survival, be as flexible as possible. Learn how to, like, write for advertising if you have that kind of creativity, you know. Learn, learn how to survive. You know, it's something that's connected or something that you're good at. There might be something that you're good at that's completely different. You know, some actors are really good at engineering, man, or fixing cars or something like that. And, you know, employ, use it, keep your skills so that you you are, you have to be flexible as an artist, I think. Yeah. There's also the yeah. other the other part of being a freelancer is because you don't, you, you when you don't have work, you really don't have work, right? Mm. So it's not like you have to wake up every day and go to the office, right? Mm. So you've got to find something for yourself to do, mm. whether it be like for us, you know, streaming mm. or even something simple like you wake up every day and you go for a walk, something that some, that gives you some kind of discipline that gives that keeps you going. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. So we, we saw a funny Facebook status the other day. Gosh, I forget. Did I brush my teeth today? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another actor said that in the in the comment, if I don't go out, do I need to brush my teeth? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like kind of the basic stuff. I mean, that's just a joke, lah. But you know what I mean? It's like finding something um, to keep yourself rooted. You know, something that keeps yourself disciplined, uh, so that you don't yeah you don't lose your way. <laughs> yeah, I think some people can can give in to their anxieties too much, especially artists, and that's really tough for them. You know, then it becomes a question of mental health eventually. You know, is that yeah. they get so anxious about it that they can lose their rag and lose their way. You yeah. know. No, I mean, yeah. as a, as an actor, I can I can tell you where it's it's really happened to me. I can tell you a few situations where you know that one day when I found out I didn't get this role that I auditioned for, mm. and like you know, you just really you feel a wreck for for like the you know the next two weeks and you just you just really feel so horrible but actually 
It's not your fault, you know. Yeah. It just so happens you don't fit into that role for that moment, yeah. and you have In to just learn eyes, to pick yourself all. up and continue. Yeah, but we can go through this like, oh, why did I think I could be an actor anyway? I should yeah. give it up. Yeah. I'm useless, yeah, yeah. I'm deluding myself. Yeah. We, you know, we go all go through this. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you can be yeah. so drama queen about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> But I think people also have to realize maybe that's a opportunity to take, uh, to look at other positions, other yes. other roles. You it might might be that you fit into the other role better than this. It if, could yeah, be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah yes. It, it shouldn't take it too personally in terms of not able to to get that position. Yeah. So I mean, easier said than done, yeah. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. So which is yeah. why I noted that. Uh. It, it takes more than just uh, having the skills of being an actor. It's also take the but the character, the personality, in order to uh, hold on to this this difficult process. Like uh, who's it? Uh, the guy who uh, who acted in Iron Man, who's that? Robin Juniors, right? Robin Robert Downey Down Down Jr. Yeah. He, he also got his break at at, at, her, at, at the at this role of Iron Man uh, because pre- yeah. be- before that he was a, a down on his career. It's yeah. yeah. It's really ha- having the luck, <laughs> but but also the fortitude to stay into the uh, stay in this yeah. um, this yeah. In yeah. fact, in fact, for Robert Downey Jr. before that, he actually like you know he was nominated for an Oscar for Chaplin, right? Yes. Chaplin. Yeah. So like to be yeah. right up there, and then you'll be go here, right and then you'll go again. Yeah. You know. So I it, think uh, like everything in life, there's a cycle, yeah. right? And yeah. you just have to think maybe you are on this. This downward spin now, you will come up again. Yeah, um, mm. you just have to be positive. Can I yeah, yeah, and have a perspective. What you say, Terry, is, is very important. Have a perspective, be able to pull back and see where you are, because it's a very emotional job that we do. We have to commit our emotions to what we do too yeah. at the same time. So, to have that sense, to be able to have a perspective, is not easy. But I think we have to work hard to have it. You know, when my brother wanted to do acting, uh, and out of the blue, he told my father. My father was shocked. You know. But my father said something really interesting to him. He said, "You know, I noticed that my favorite actors like Richard Burton and Richard Harris, this, this, my father, our father's two favorite actors, said they have a real problem with discipline of alcohol. And I think this job, and they are brilliant actors. They're my favorite. They're like the world best. You know, but still they have these problems, and it has something to do with that. This job affects your ego in very strange ways, and you need acceptance or." You know, you need things like that, and somehow you need to have a perspective to be able to pull back from that. And I guess what it is is the love of the craft itself, rather than the love of adulation from others or acceptance from others. So that is what he told my brother, which I thought, wow, my father born in China, become a doctor. We can. It's very clever to tell my brother this kind of advice. You know, was it in nineteen seventies when he said that? Yeah. Because yeah. I think that that's when your brother started the, his yes. acting career. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I must tell you a funny story about perspective. Mm. Ah, <laughs> Ten years yeah. ago, mm. I was a talk show host for a Chinese radio show every mm. Tuesday morning. I had this caller who called, you know, this is a live show, right? And the guy says, oh, you know, I'm an actor and I'm hardly making ends meet. Mm. And everybody, my parents, my friends, my girlfriend, every tell, everybody tells me to quit and go get a proper job. So, you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, Funny show, it's not about money. So he says, you have any advice for me, you know? And uh, of course, I, I don't exactly remember what went on, what I said to him, or what the, the, the rest of the callers, what suggestions they gave. But then, uh, I then uh, wrote something on my website called Free Things in Singapore, where you can go to get free food, where mm-hmm. you get free things, free medical treatment, uh, you know, free, everything is just free. Free shuttle buses, free transport, uh, you know, free housing if you are homeless. And uh, actually, I just stumbled across that yesterday I was, as I was looking at my uh, old stuff, you know. So, yeah. uh, uh, I, 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 okay, I recall saying to the person, I said, I'm a, I said I, it's very hard for me to, to advise you, you know, right? But I think uh, your problem, this is a money show, is that your money coming in is not enough for the money going out, right? So what mm-hmm. I can help is to talk a bit about, you know, how to reduce the money that's going out. Because the money is coming in, it's entirely up to you, right? Beyond, mm-hmm. you know, your control. And that's why I did these free things in Singapore, lah. okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a really good thing to do. Thank you for doing that. Man. Yeah, unfortunately, I did not update that. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's already 10 years old. Uh, but looking at it, I see many of the 
places where they uh, Cafe serve stuff? free food. Uh. Mm. They, they're still doing it uh, 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 today, you know. Yeah, okay. Imyam Road, uh, Buddha Proof Temple, uh, Nativity Church uh, in the at the end of uh, Upper Serangoon Road in Aukang. Mm. You know? They're still doing uh. it. Yeah. In fact, uh, I, uh, I'm a numbers person. Uh, let the numbers do the talking. Uh. I think mm. at its peak, uh, some uh, thirty or fifty thousand people were getting free food from all these places every day. You know. But now under COVID, they, they, they can't dine in. And I, I believe that the takeaway schemes are still uh, ongoing. Yes. On, yes. on this point, right, uh, in terms of materials, uh, material and spending, to your two, no, to, to your two knowledge, uh, has there been uh, actors, actresses that have really done well in Singapore and those people who are really down? Because we we we, we uh, uh we are not talking about uh, like having like a, a lifestyle that that's on average. We do we have people really on the like, on the, the high income status because of their acting career, and have there been any that really gone low down because they haven't got any luck in the their career. Yeah, I guess yeah. I I I don't think um when it comes to yes. Singapore, we can talk. I, I don't believe that any yeah. actor is in talking in the scale that you're talking up. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. you know. There I isn't mean, that kind of money around. Um, I yeah. think uh, yeah. even like uh, if you're talking about like the top um, TV actors, uh, I think a lot of the money that they make is from advertising. Ribbons, yeah, <laughs> you know, go cut ribbons or uh, endorsements. Or endorsements, yeah. you know, or doing outside stuff, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I mean it. It's not. It's not like easy money come out. It's really, you know, I mean, things that they they they, they actually go. <laughs> like like, I believe the MediaCorp actresses and actors are basically it's in the same situation where they have contract with MediaCorp. They don't yes. earn much from the basic salary. They earn from the endorsement. They earn from I, the I dinner so. and dance. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think and the so station like, acts as their sure. agents too and takes quite a big cut as well. Yes. You know, so they they can't they can't earn that much lah. Like, you know, at the end they. Yeah. So for us performers, I think there, there's hardly anybody in that category. I don't think I don't think I can't think of anybody actually. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps in the music industry, there may be some people who are starting to do well. Some people who went to Taiwan and did quite well for a while. Yeah, because there's a huge music industry in Taiwan, but no, 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 can't talk about that no, now. No, no, now it's China. <laughs> Now it's China, China, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Our exactly. market is just And they don't small. need us in China, they have their own already. So and of course, you know, the two yeah. of us are both English speaking, uh, mostly English yeah. speaking only. Yeah. So we yeah. are like limited. La. <laughs> Our yeah. market is like, like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great to be involved in a little bit, to have our hopes up and all that. But I think we're more real about it now. You know, we didn't get cast in uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Asians. But a lot of our fellow actors there, and we're very happy for yeah, them. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, they get some exposure. Some Singapore actors at last. It's about Singapore, so yeah. thank goodness America was smart enough to come and cast here. So in some I, of us. I, I still think it would be uh, more appropriate to cast uh, Crazy Crazy Rich Asian in Indonesia. I, 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 there are real crazy <laughs> there. Yes. Uh, yes. Go, uh, go shopping, take the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So, on, on this on this realization that that basically we don't have uh, actor actresses reading really living the high high life. Mm -hmm. So it's really people chasing the passion to understand that if your angle is to be rich famous is is probably is not the best motivation that you or best goal it may not be yeah. the right job for you yes. and it may not be the right job anyway because we yeah. kind of think that most good actors come from the approach where there is passion for the actual yeah. work itself you know the philosophy of the work and the work itself so if they if they are in the industry a bigger industry that they can rise and, and become so rich and famous. Good for them, lah. You know. But most of us who are quite good at it are not in it for those reasons anyway. You know, there's more of a passion yes. for actually depicting well what this humanity we're playing is about and what the theme is about and how it exposes our society yes. in the movie, lah, or, or the play. You clearly you're looking at your background is and all those um, gigs that you took up in the early days. No, all those are not for money. Or it's not for fame. Yeah. It's really about passion. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We've been lucky. We've been able to survive. Mm. 
You know, I think that's already an achievement. <laughs> yeah, it also, you know, also partly, yeah, your star yeah. Burn, burns very brightly. If let's say you are the young ingenue, yeah. your star will burn brightly only for as long as you are young. La. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so they say the character actors are the ones that work forever. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully our time will come around again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always say when I finally reach the age of that ama or whatever that they all think I am, maybe I will get more work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no need to go for so much makeup. La. So, <laughs> Oh, how, how old are you guys now? <laughs> so I'm in my 50s. <laughs> and I'm, I'm 65, I'm mid 60s. Oh, so yeah. you are 51 and you are 60. Thank you. Thank you. Five. <laughs> 65. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, also, yeah. Terry, yeah, please. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, oh, uh, you, I think you should carry okay, okay. I wanted to ask you whether are you ready to play a song. <laughs> so I was going to tell you, yeah, I was yeah. going to mention you. I mean, I just wanted to, to mention, you know, kind of like the, 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 the things, the yeah. things that you, see, that you see around us. Uh, so this is our streaming room where mm. we, we do streaming every day uh, on Sessions Live. We used Five, to do it on Facebook, Instagram. 5 p.m., right? Uh, 5 p.m. and 11 a.m. twice yeah. a day we do it. Uh. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can see around us, like for instance, our our, our Neokalelim's poster, which was made by my nieces. They made it because uh, two years ago, Pink Dot, the two of us wanted to do our live stream in our toilet. We used to do it in our bathroom. Mm. You know, like mm. the picture I sent you with our mm. beret and, uh, for Pink Dot. And now Pink Dot is about to come on again. Mm. Uh, that is on June the 12th. Uh, and we will be involved in, uh, in the concert for that. Uh, you can see posters around us are all from our work in the past these two these two are from square yeah. moon yeah, yeah that's why yeah. 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 and then back there also some you know posters of him um uh, and then we, you know we always have 1987 with us uh, because you know we we got to know i got to know Teo so long because i played her in a play you know this is how we are blessed um mm. to be able to to do work that um speaks true to put up a mirror to our society. Mm -hmm. um, and we learned about 1987, you know, we I learned about her <laughs> through, through uh, playing her. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the song that we are going, that we want to sing for you, um, is actually a, a song, originally the, type, the, the song is from an English choral group called Chumba Wumba. The song is called uh, The Digger Song. We never heard of the song, mm -hmm. but Chung Swan Zhe, who was also one of the 22 that were detained without trial back in 1987. She wrote the lyrics uh, for us and she, uh, uh, it, it says all the things that we want to talk about for Singaporeans. Uh. The song is called Old Singaporeans and we've added one verse which uh, Bart, uh, Badria Begum, who is watching us now, helped us to write the LGBT verse uh, this week, yeah. uh, for this month for, for Pink Dot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So shall we? Shall we sing for you? Oh, yes, 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 yes. We are all dying to. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so one, yeah. of, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to, to say to you is also that, um, of course, we try to not to be too like too militant or too, too strident. strident yeah. Yeah. Because to us it's important, and this we learn from Dio Solang also. She always says, you know, when you if you want to do uh, if you want to be an activist, right, be. Be fun, la. make it fun. Then people will join you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> only a song. La. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, exactly. so, yeah. Things about having fun. La. So, that's what we do every day. It's about having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, this one is called All Singaporeans. Yes. Okay. You're... I mean, it's medium, okay. medium. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> I count, huh? Yeah. Singaporeans, stand up now, stand up now. Singaporeans, stand up now. We should now begin a better life to win. Transparency we need. Cut down all the greed. Stand up now, people. We need better jobs, stand up now, stand up now. We need better jobs, stand up now. This is our refrain, policies must change. Time to heed our call, we need better jobs for all. Stand up now, people all. Affordable HDB. Stand up now, stand up now, affordable HDB, stand up now. Housing is our right, 
Don't give up the fight. High prices that are set have kept us all in debt. Stand up now, people all. Talk about CBF. Stand up now, stand up now. Let's talk about CBF. Stand up now. Since the laws came in, they broke no questioning. Why don't they take heed? So many of us in need. Stand up now, people all. LGBT rights. Stand up now, stand up now. For LGBT rights. Stand up now. Repeal 377A, it's okay to be gay. Why discriminate? Choose love instead of hate. Stand up now, people all. Oh, Singaporeans, stand up now, stand up now. Singaporeans, stand up now. You must all be bold, your rights to uphold. Fight for what is fair, our wealth should be shared. Stand up now, people all. Never on bended knees, stand up now, stand up now. Never on bended knees, stand up now. The future's in your hand. Time to make a stand for your children's sake. A choice you need to make. Vote for change, people all. Stand up now, Singapore. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, Terry. Yes, they're singing all the stuff that we have been talking everywhere in the state. Have you ever thought of making a music TV for this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have thought about it. In fact, Terry, my yes. idea is to make a big choral choral version of this. Get real singers. With because harmonies. The original song is a choral number. I wanted to get all different singers to come and sing together. Maybe we can work on that together. Yes, yes, yes definitely, definitely. Huh? That would be, be so fun. Yeah. <laughs> From different backgrounds, all singing together. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah uh, lyrics by Chen Suanzi. Excuse me. And one. Uh, I see. Little... I see. We really, uh good good reactions coming from the the yes. audiences. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> I Thank can you, see guys. The... Uh, <laughs> maybe you want to remind people where they can view your show on a daily basis. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for, for saying that. Uh, it's sessionslive.com backslash the Nyokalelims. Let me just type it in, uh, huh? Oh, you can type it in the the comments uh, so people yeah. know. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Terry, for that. Mm, thank you, Terry. <laughs> I'm doing this every day, so uh, I know how. To. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, underwatch, meaning uh, people more people should should view your show. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do come and check us out. Yeah, uh, do come and check us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can come and request for songs. You know, and, you can and people don't, people don't realize that you take the effort to acknowledge everyone coming in to view your show. There's a lot of personal touch when it comes to you, you doing the live stream. Yes, yeah. and we're learning also how to do this. Now. Yes. So yeah. we, we, we call it the Nyoka Lelim Social Club. Yeah, that's yeah. what uh, our, 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 <laughs> our stream every day is. You have your friends, relatives are like, tuning in. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of some, us. Yeah. One of the reasons why we started also because we couldn't see our family. Ah, yes, during the pandemic, during yeah, the lockdown, the circuit pandemic. breaker. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. No, it was lovely, you know. Yeah, yeah. Her family and then my GTM was all watching. So it started off as a family gathering. Yes, <laughs> I know, yeah. But then we got a few people who really kind of like locked into what we were doing. They liked it. Yeah. So they started to come really regularly, yeah. which was the beginning of, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also because nowadays you don't have much uh, radio shows that you would, you find connected to. So in a way, it re uh, since you're doing it daily, it replaces their like daily, yeah, Radio Fusion, they could like turn yeah. it on, go and prepare dinner and listen yeah. to what you're saying. Yes. Uh. And many have become our friends already, which is a 
case of an uh, online friends becoming your real friends. Yes, yes. That's very new for me. And, and when the circuit breaker ends, sorry, oh, not the circuit breaker, the phase 1.5 ends, you could like yeah. probably uh, organize gatherings. Uh, we can uh, meet, meet up. The yeah. fans, meet the fan session. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're really hoping that that yeah, will happen. We hope. We yeah, hope. yeah, we've met quite a few of them uh, because uh, before the pandemic, we managed to do a crazy Christmas concert, you know. Mm. But then since then, yeah, not, not, yeah, we gotta... uh, it's been hard. It's been hard for people yeah. to meet up. Yeah, yes. it's yes. nice for us. Uh, we we came up with this. Like somebody said to me, "Wow, oh, you're very good. Uh, you reinvented yourselves." <laughs> but uh, you know, if we are called the new Kalelims because uh, I'm new Sri Lim. Yes. I'm in case you. With our ukuleles, we are the new Kalelims. <laughs> but when you when you start up, uh, we we did see you you started performing with ukuleles. But when you started uh, using this music, musical instrument? Oh, not not yeah. long ago. Not long ago, I'm, isn't it? No, not that long ago, yeah. Yeah, um, we started like I could always play music. So, he can always yeah. play, but I I started to learn uh, from the from YouTube. I learned how to play from YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So then that's when we started. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, just playing songs together was the fun thing. It wasn't for show or for anybody else to see. Yeah, it was just for the. It was just for new us. dimension and our relationship. Yeah. Uh, it was just you know? for fun. Yeah. 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 You also recommend like for active aging. <laughs> Like yes. learning, uh, picking up, pick up a musical instrument. Yes, yeah. yes, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Music's it's a, got a lot of patterns, you know, it's very good for the thinking. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. And it raises yeah. your spirits. Yes. You're really singing, it's raising your spirits. For me, uh, I always love singing. One of the reasons why I picked up the mm-hmm. instrument is because, you know, you, you like to sing, but not many people like to hear you sing. <laughs> uh, then once you learn to play, and nobody can stop you already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we might, because we sing every day, we we we're, we're getting better at it, lah. It's just the practice of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can see some of our regulars are uh, coming onto your stream. <laughs> so, uh, Clydeen from uh, from Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, yeah, as well as Badria. Yeah, and uh, everyone else. Thank you for the comments. Hey guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Richard from Bravo. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Terry, uh, for having us. It's, no it's, worries. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for coming out today. But yeah. be- before we go, uh, mm. maybe we'd like to talk about the recent uh, campaign <clears throat> that you did. Which one? Uh? The recent campaign that you did for... Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> yes, thank you, Terry. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dr. Jo Ronan, actually, uh, she she had her PhD thesis uh, stolen by her lecturer. Uh, basically, that's what the story is. Yes. Um, and uh, she's uh, so taking her, her university to court. And, you know, I tell you, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing, uh, uh, fighting against a university because they have, they have all the big guns. Uh, I mean, you guys, you guys uh, <laughs> we equate it a little bit, you know, when... Uh, to when, what has uh, happened to you. To uh-huh. happened to I, I think we easier to equate to what Jin Tan... Jin Tan yes. Wrote? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um. Yeah. So uh. uh Joe. Joe Ronan. Um. Uh, is um taking up a, a case against her. So originally, when she complained to the school, they said um, you know, no, there's no, there's no merit in her claim. So uh, there was an independent body outside who uh, came in, uh, did an assessment, and said there is some merit to her claim. Mm-hmm. So then uh, the school then had another investigation and found themselves innocent. You know, uh, but they made the lecturer do some edits to his book. So it's like, mm, mm. if you say that there is no plagiarism, then why, how come he's editing his book, mm. right? Yeah. So that's what now uh, she's at the stage where she's do, uh, going through a judicial review um, 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 and they are kind of pressurizing her to say that Drop they've the got case. a lot of QCs, yeah. you know, mm. and they want to take costs from her, mm. you know, so... I think as, a, as an individual, uh, her spirit was very low. It's very scary fighting. And do you keep fighting because is it a losing battle? And do you still keep fighting, you know? So from, from all the way from here, we decided mm-hmm. that we would help her. So uh, that's why we did uh, singing for justice for Joe uh, Ronan. Um, yes. Yeah. And also the crowdfunding issue, we had just seen some of it in Singapore. Mm-hmm. To go, oh, this is starting to work in Singapore. And the, the common man, the man in the street is willing to to give their money for a cause that they think you know, of the big fish bullying the small fish, okay, I'll help the small fish if it looks unjust to me. Yes. You know, So we, we were riding off the top of that and we had a lot of optimism. She was really depressed being crushed by the big body right. and being swept aside by the big body, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I can't do this, you know, being gaslighted to some extent, also thinking they were trying to make her feel that she was in the wrong, you know. So when she asked us, he said, oh, you guys, you guys do this, uh, you know, and we just come off the back of this fundraising 
in Singapore. He said, can you try to do for us in, in your ukulele session? We said, sure, of course, we'll try that. You know, and it ended up to be like reasonably successful. I think she managed to raise quite a bit on her own by doing the appeal by herself, but this certainly helped a little bit and it definitely helped to lift her spirits a bit, you know? Yes. So we're very happy to be a part yes. of this. Yes, right? especially to feel that you're not alone in this battle. Yes, exactly, which is a very important factor, you know? For the small fish, it is really difficult. Lah, huh? Yeah, yes. I'm trying to find the link, uh, then I can share it on the chat. Yes, yeah. please because, do, please uh, do. Yeah, because the, uh, the the campaign is still on uh, till uh, for the 4th of June. I mean, she's reached, reached her target, but of course, you know... You have all, uh, all as, uh, other costs that's involved. I think what she put up is a more... should be a modest uh, amount of what the amount the cost will come up to. Yeah, she she right. definitely would have other expenses involved. Yes, you're right. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's really uh, David and Goliath's uh, situation. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, you found it. Let's huh? see yeah. if that works. Sometimes the link doesn't... Uh, yeah, let me just check whether I got the right link. Hey, thanks for that, uh, um, no Terry. Worries, yeah. No worries. yeah. Uh, yes, the... You know, sometimes it happens like that. Mm. How, okay, uh, so what's the name of the page again? Uh, wait, let me find what's it. the investigation? Uh, because I think it's truncated. Mm. Ah, I see. Okay. Let me find it and then I will cut and paste. Mm. Copy. And let me delete that. Uh, mm. Delete that one. Yeah. Let's see if this one works. Does that link work? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, this one should be okay. Yeah. Yes, ah, okay. yes, this it does. Okay. So, wow, that's uh, 30,000 pound. Yeah. Yeah, so we're so happy for her. It's a start, as you said. 51,000 yes. Singapore dollars. Very really uh, good. Yeah. But there's still outstanding 30,000. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yes. if And they... that's one more day. <laughs> that's yeah. sad. That's uh, sad. Uh, yeah, so uh, just spend what you can. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's not easy. It's a yeah, monumental yeah. task. Uh, mm. Battle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, she co-founded Necessary Stage. Mm. Yes, yes, she was one of the early, yeah. <laughs> In fact, you know, I told you about that scholarship, mm. that tobacco and yes. British Council. Yeah, so she was the, I was the, Ivan Heng was the first scholar. I was the second one. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, she and Clifton Turner were the third and fourth. That particular year, they sent two. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, so, I mean. Ivan you know, Heng was also one of those. Recipients. Ivan Heng was the first one. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It was the first recipient. So Ivan and I were both in law school together. Mm. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> Blue tech fell. Is that? <laughs> is this symbolic? Is this is symbolic? Uh, <laughs> Definitely a dictator there. Does the dictator fall? Yes. <laughs> it's a sign from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I noticed that the Sweden only have uh, the... Uh, the YouTube doesn't have the link, so let me grab the link and throw it in you. Um, the YouTube, ma. Yes. Oh, you, uh, yeah. oh no, I'll, I'll paste it, I'll paste it. Uh, 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 thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let me just take that. Uh, do you guys do stuff in Mandarin as well? A few songs, one in Hokkien, and then... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she sings. I, my Mandarin is hopeless. Also, oh, you have a Hokkien song also la, that you can sing for and us. And then one Hokkien song. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I tell my, come Terry. Oh, Terry, got time. Oh, yeah, we have, have time. Time. we have time, we have time. We have time, okay, Terry. Okay. So, over to you. Sing us your Hokkien song now. Okay, come, we sing. Huh? Okay. okay. It's from the movie Haiki Sin Law. So, the movie is the, to date, the, the, the one and only ever feature film in Penang Hokkien. Uh, the, the filmmaker, actually, he could, if he, he could have got funding early, early on, if he had agreed to do it in Mandarin. But uh, uh, he wanted to keep it in his Penang Hokkien, in his language. Uh, and then you know what the irony is? It came to Singapore, they dubbed it in, into Mandarin. <laughs> because of the Mandarin quota thing in Singapore. Yeah. Yeah, back then, I think now nowadays, after 2015, the G2015. Yeah. We, we, uh, remember at that point when they started to leave all like all censorship on yeah, uh, yeah. they started to have the CPF song so, uh, sung in ha Hokkien can you uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they know they, they have to appeal to that, that, I, that, think that was, program. I think it was Golden Village itself who mm -hmm. wanted it in Mandarin because they think there's no market la. so they mm -hmm. used the Taiwanese dub version 
the, the mm. Mandarin version. So, but it did come to Singapore in the Chinese festival, in the white, in uh, all the Chinese film festivals, it stayed in Hokkien. Yeah, so yeah. so the film and the, just the song is also an ode to his mother to say, Kam Siali. Kam Siali literally means thank you, uh, just means thank you. And um, the filmmaker well, wanted to thank his mother for, you know, sharing, bringing her to the cinema, him to a cinema when she was, when he was a child. And that's why he's a filmmaker today. The mother, of course, went to the cinema to escape her, her trauma and her wars, which he didn't know until he was grown up. Mm. Uh, so we also did a little English. The, the song is sung by Zhao Chuan, who's quite a famous uh, Taiwanese singer. Mm. Um, the song is written by two Malaysian um, a couple, a Malaysian yeah. couple. Mm. Uh, but the uh, we, our version is the only version that you will get to hear. You can come to sessions to hear it with an English uh, verse tagged on it for our international audience to understand a little bit of the... Of mm. course, you know, translation doesn't really yeah, work. So, it doesn't uh, reflect the, the feeling. Yeah, is there, right. yeah. And we've also attached a song called Blue Skies to it, which is a features, it's an Irving Berlin song, it features in the movie as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Kam Siali. Kam Siali. to me. Mm-hmm. 
daughter should play this song for oh, their mama. Parents. Yeah, parents, parents, parents. parents. Hey, I, I find that the English translation was actually really to point. Uh, because yeah. uh, um, uh, a friend of ours transliterated it for his uh, boyfriend. He really, his boyfriend Indonesian really loved the song. Yeah, mm. yeah. He's very good in Hokkien, so he transliterated it. Mm. So that's why we could manage to yeah, we manage know, to we mix it together. Yes, 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 yes. It's not, uh, no, it's not uh, because yeah. normally we, we expect the the translation to like go off tangent just just to uh, follow the syllabus. Yeah. but the uh, translation is better yes, than the uh, original. The English translation helped to the spirit of the song. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. You. <laughs> you. You can see from the audience, they are, they, they love the, the song. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Oh, then going crazy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the hearts and loves. We can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have reached to nine p.m. I'm sorry. Yes. Before we leave, do you have anything to like say to would be aspire uh, to the audience and would be aspiring artists? I think keep working at what you're doing, keep growing as a human being. I think an artist is being kind of like, it's, it's the best of the human side of yourself, if you can be that. Yeah, there's all kinds of artists. There's artists who want to be more destructive, artists who want to be more political, artists who want a different platform, but fundamentally it's about being a human being. And if you recognize that, it can give you some humility as well as some purpose and some perspective about what you're doing. I would say that's the way to keep going at it. If there may be many discouragements, I think it's not easy to be an artist in this world, whatever society you come from. Um, a lot of societies have got a love-hate relationship with artists as well. So you've got to accept the ups and downs of it. If, if you're passionate about it, there may be things you're burning to say that will not be popular, you know? So you have to keep at it. You have to keep a perspective and yet be confident about yourself that you will keep on growing as a human being. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to also say just Dr. Mm -hmm. Joe Ronan has just joined us uh, from Glasgow and oh. uh, yeah, so thanks, thanks, thanks for letting us highlight again uh, her, her case. And, uh, yeah, yeah, she's just uh, joined in. I just saw that she's this uh, Hi, sweet, and Joe, Joe calling, calling in from uh, Glasgow. From Glasgow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe Ronan. So uh, Joe, thanks for listening. I know you're thanks, teaching Joe. in school. Uh, we've shared yeah. your we've shared your your website. Uh, there's two more days. Uh, Y'all can go and help her by um, by contributing to her uh, course, Dr. Joe Ronan. You can see oh, that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Joe, you can see yes. that. Joe Ronan, yeah. yes. Joe Ronan, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, no, nothing to add. I mean, like, be, be, you know, I think uh, uh, find, find your own center, be true to yourself, uh, and uh, don't, don't, let anyone, don't let anyone tell you that you cannot be what you want to be. Mm. So that's, I think that's, a, that's vital to being an artist. Yes. Uh. Yeah. Do you have this Kiam uh, uh recorded separately on a, as a title itself? I think somewhere in uh, YouTube, possibly. Uh, I think this, is, I, this. I think this can be a what do you call it? Fam, uh, it's like family favorite. Uh, something that you play. Uh, like, yeah. uh, like I said, every son and daughter must play yeah, this uh, fam, to their uh, mother <laughs> and their papa. So throw away all those commercial <laughs> titles for Mother's Day, Father's Day. I think this this works perfectly well, and and it uh, carries a lot of emotion. Uh, it does. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Very beautiful song. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank yes. you. It is a good, if, uh, if you want to listen to it, you can also look for the original. The original on YouTube, if you type You Mean the World to Me, Hokkien song, you will also see a lot of snippets of the movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then you will get the idea why some of the parts where we change the lyrics doesn't mention in the Hokkien part, you know, uh, our dancing days, our movie shows. It actually doesn't say that in Hokkien, but in the movie, you actually see how the mother and the son, you know, they really enjoy going to the movies together mm -hmm. and dancing together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much again for, for being here with us on thank our, our, our last session. Yeah. And I hope the audiences uh, enjoyed the, the, the performance by these two talented author, <laughs> actors and actresses. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Yes. Ah. So, Thanks for having us, Terry. Yes. Thank and, you so uh, much. Also, yeah. yes. Everyone, so please much. support yeah. the online citizen. Yes, everyone, <laughs> please support the online citizen. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Good night.
Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great evening.